Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be integrating an interesting function. So we have w of x divided by x dx, and we're going to integrate. But what is w of x, right? It is Lambert's w function. I'm going to go ahead and talk about it a little bit, so to kind of like give you an idea, maybe some type of definition, and then we're going to get on with the integration. So Lambert's w function is actually a special type of function, which is also called product log. And you can use that uh, with Wolfram Alpha, one word, product log, parentheses, whatever your argument is. And then it'll give you a numerical answer if you enter a numerical answer. So Lambert's W function is basically the inverse of a function, which is x times e to the x. So if you invert this function, f inverse would be Lambert's W function. In other words, if you apply... Lambert's W function on x e to the x, which would be applying, uh, you know, f inverse on f, that would give you the identity function, and that would be x. Make sense? So, you know that whenever we have something like e to the x, we can go ahead and ln it, and that will give us x. So, this is the logarithm function. But with this one, we have what is called the product log, Okay that turns the product into the whatever the argument is. So we could also write this in a couple different ways. For example, if you take w of x multiplied by e to the w of x, this is also equal to x. And you can kind of explore why this is happening. There's actually a really nice proof that, I don't know if you talked about it before, but you can definitely explore, explore it. It's fun. So how do we solve integrals with Lambert's w function, right? You can actually use substitution. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, again, we're integrating w of x divided by x dx. And we're going to go ahead and call w of x something. How about u? u equals w of x. Now, this, by definition, gives us that x is equal to u e to the u. Okay? Because if you w u e to the u, that gives you u, right? <laughs> okay. And if it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. There's no two, but I just added it. So now, this is really cool because from here we can find dx. Remember with substitution, the, with the u substitution most of the time, we call something u and then we try to find the u based on dx, right? So what is dx? And uh, should we go about finding du? So here's the thing. If you, you want to find du, you need to differentiate Lambert's W function. But you may not know how to differentiate it, and that's okay. You can use the inverse function definition, but it, let's say you just didn't know it, you can still go with the dx. So let's go ahead and differentiate both sides. dx would be the derivative of u e to the u multiplied by du, as you know by definition. So it's going to look like this, the derivative of u, which is going to be 1, right, times the derivative of the second function, so we're using the product rule, plus the derivative of e to the u, which is e to the u multiplied by the first function, which is u. By the way, this derivative is with respect to u. That's why you don't multiply by u prime. And instead, you multiply by du, which kind of becomes u prime if you write it as du over dx. Make sense? Okay. Now, from here, we get dx, and we have that in, in our equation, so we can go ahead and replace it. But what are you going to replace x with? I think we have everything we need. We, by the way, we don't replace u with anything because we don't have u in our equation. That's the tricky part, right? So we're going to do these two replacements. w of x is just going to be... What are you going to replace w of x with, right? Well, w of x is just going to be u. So it's going to be u divided by x, which is u e to the u, multiplied by dx, which is e to the u plus u e to the u. That comes from here. And then there's a du and then integration symbol. Okay, now we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit. First of all, notice that u cancels out. Obviously, you don't want u to be zero. And then here we can actually factor out e to the power u. That's a common factor, right? e to the u out, we get 1 plus u, and then that is divided by e to the u, and then multiply by du. This is awesome, isn't it? e to the u cancels out, and we end up with something super duper simple. How do you integrate? 1 plus u, right? That's so easy. Of course, you're integrating with respect to u. How do you integrate 1? It's just u, right? <laughs> Obviously. And du 
indicates that we are integrating with respect to u, not with respect to x. Of course, we couldn't, right? And then to integrate u, you're just going to use the power rule. That'll be u squared divided by 2. And then, of course, this will be our answer, but I don't think I need parentheses. And then we're going to add our constant, which is something that you should never, ever forget, right? Awesome. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this result because we still have the back substitute. What is u? Who are you? What are you? u is equal to w of x. Okay, great. So we can go ahead and replace u with w of x. And then, of course, we're going to have w of x squared divided by 2 plus c. Here, you don't have to, but sometimes people like factoring. And if you do really want to do this, you can actually go ahead and factor out maybe 1 half of w of x. The reason why we take out a 1 half is to get something uh, like an integer inside. And now this is going to give us 2 plus w of x. Okay. Now, this is particularly helpful because if you use Wolfram Alpha, it will probably give you this as a solution. I didn't check. Maybe I did check and I forgot. But, you know, it's just what it is. So, that should be the answer. But I want to show you something. So, basically, since this is the integral of w of x divided by x dx, when we differentiate this, it should give us that, right? The integrand, the stuff inside the integral sign. Does that really work? Well, it should, but first of all, we need to talk about something which is important. What is the derivative of w of x? Let me go ahead and give it to you as a formula so you can use it. And you can kind of think about why this works. I think in another video, I uh, sh showed you how to differentiate it. But if you do differentiate w of x, you get w of x divided by x times w of x plus x. If you want, you can also factor out this x, no big deal but sometimes people do that, okay? So that's the derivative of w of x, which is interesting because w, the derivative of w of x includes itself, okay? And now if you go ahead and differentiate this, which I'm gonna use this one, okay? Take that. And of course, constant is not important, but if you differentiate this, you're gonna get the derivative of w of x, which is basically w of x divided by x times w of x plus x. And then if you differentiate this, that's the power rule. So you're going to bring the 2 to the front, reduce the power, and then multiply by the derivative of w of x, which is w of x divided by x times w of x plus x. And of course, don't forget the 2 in the denominator. And then the derivative of c is a 0 because it's a constant. The 2s cancel out. Notice that we do get a common denominator already. So we can go ahead and add the numerators, w of x plus w of x squared divided by x w of x plus x. And if you factor out w of x here, you're going to get 1 plus w of x. And if you factor out x here, you're going to get w of x plus 1. Again, these two are going to cancel out, leaving us with w of x divided by x, which confirms our findings. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI, my other channel that focuses on complex numbers. And bye-bye.